In the tapestry of Nigerian higher education, the other sea has often been marked by theoretical content, drifting away from practical applications. As students dedicate years to professional courses, the chasm between academic knowledge and the dynamic demands of industries widen. Today, we embark on a documentary that not only unravels the challenges faced by graduates in Nigeria's ever-evolving digital labor market, but also sheds light on the profound disparity between education and employability. Did you know that, according to a report by the National Universities Commission, NUC, only 35% of Nigerian graduates are deemed employable? This statistic underscores the pressing need to bridge the gap between educational curricula and the skill sets demanded by industries. A survey conducted by the Nigerian Employers Consultative Association, NECA, revealed that 60% of employers in Nigeria believe there is a significant skills mismatch among graduates, further exacerbating the challenge of employability. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, the unemployment rate among Nigerian graduates stands at 33.3%, emphasizing the urgency of aligning education with the evolving needs of the job market. The industrial sector undergoes constant evolution in how work is executed, how workers are selected, and the skills they are expected to possess. Unfortunately, the education system in Nigeria has shown little to no adaptability to these shifts in the labor market. From theoretical realms to the practical demands of the workforce, our documentary explores the hurdles faced by graduates as they navigate a rapidly changing job landscape. To comprehend the gravity of this situation, we turn to experts and stakeholders within public institutions and delve deeper into this issue. The current state of practical training in higher education in Nigeria is something challenging, somehow challenging. It's not what is worthwhile. But higher institutions in Nigeria today is known for more of theoretical training rather than practical training. Okay, um, to an extent, the current curriculum um, to an extent can support, but not 100%. There is need for us to really rework what we have on ground, but not the draconian type that will make you study what is, is not meant for you. Currently, you, you tend to do everything when you're supposed to be focused on something. Current curriculum we have tends to keep you to learn everything rather than focusing on one thing, but the world has gone beyond that now. You become an expert in a particular area, and that is what we should be looking at. Okay, thank you. Um, well, I've said in passing some of the challenges that um, lecturers or um, tutors or mentors can face in transition into uh, a more uh, product-focusing researches. One um, issue of power supply, no, no system thrives when there is no power. No two system will thrive. So that is there. Uh, the issue of funding, most especially funding. Uh, what you want to do, there's nothing you want to do without money coming up. Now, what you are paid is peanuts, and it's from the peanuts you see try and help as many students as possible. Yeah, yeah there are a lot of instances. Currently, one of my students is serving in the north, and then um, when I went through the curriculum, I discovered that there are some okay let me put it this way in my own specialization we have the um the educational aspect of it and we have the clinical aspect of it so when i went through the curriculum i discovered that the clinical aspect is not there okay and it's one of the challenge i also faced well when i was in school so i took it upon myself to incorporate those um, clinical aspects to teaching them so when that my student is currently serving and then he had to message me i was thank you mercy thank you ma for because i told them in the class that this thing i'm not going to give it to you as exam i'm not going to assess you because it is not part of the curriculum but i'm going to teach you he had to call me i was thanking me that i know they posted i had um she was he was able to um um is it redeploy or something okay. something to a clinical setting and because of what i taught them yeah, it can it's so like the confidence is want to just practice and all that so imagine if it was not exposed to that maybe it wouldn't have even try applying to that aspect and then should change himself having engaged in insightful conversations with educators and lecturers 
unraveling the intricacies and challenges embedded within the educational system. We now shift our focus to those at the forefront of this experience, the students. Mm, there is a gap a lot. There is a gap. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, which gap? So in terms of hands of experience, I feel there is a large gap that still needs to be met. I'm, I'm studying my tuition and diagnostics and throughout my four year course in the university, I'm really meant to be because it's, it's a clinical course at some point, so I'm going to see patients. And throughout my stay in the university, I'm really meant to see patients for more than six months. And after doing a three year plus of continuous treatment classes, I did it for just a short period of six months, which I didn't even get on this point. I'm just sitting there to watch what is going on. Same as other classes that are to be done. I mean, you go to classes, your lecturer tells you, you don't have this equipment, you don't have this machine, they just give you a new your it's like a practical So at the end of the day, even when you have done with your program of study, it's still a problem for you to be able to push it out there. This is why this is how I can put it into practice. So it's, I'm not getting the experience, there's a very large gap. Academic system, they are not really keeping up to date with the changes that are happening around the world. In the legal field now, for example, we see the development of things like artificial intelligence and you are wondering how that will impact um, creators, maybe authors, singers. I don't know if you saw that um, there was a song that was created with Drake and The Weeknd's voice about a couple of months ago. And so it was not them recording, it was AI that wow. recorded the song with their musical style and their voices. So you almost think it's them. And, you know, that can like amount to copyright infringement yeah. in some in some kind of cases like that. And so these kind of things are not being like updated into our into our um, what's it going to our curriculums and things like that. So that's just one of the many examples mm -hmm. and the um, divorce case of Akimi, the footballer, okay. where he had nothing to his name, even though he's a millionaire and all. Mm -hmm. So how do you when it comes to like family law for example, mm -hmm. which is a three hundred level course, how do you bring such development and you know, teach your students okay. practically and things like that so there's still a gap and i think we can do better in that aspect again because it's psychology i would say it's like an 80 percent no because even though nigeria has a very strong need for psychologists mental health is just not something that we prioritize a lot in nigeria and so the options are sort of limited um i think it links back to my to my previous um to my previous topic despite the fact that psychology has really broadened my knowledge of the world and the way that it works um i had to step outside of my field to look at my passions and what will pay me a livable enjoyable wage so um while my knowledge of psychology would help in my field it's not really a central building block and that's actually a disadvantage like i said i think there's a gap because if that gap is not bridged from school, except you put in the extra effort yourself to keep yourself updated with what's going on around the world in your field. You might not, you might come out like with a good degree, and but you might your skills might not be so relevant to what they are doing at the moment. Mm -hmm. For example, um, the automobile industry you can see um, cars now running on things like um, electricity, water, and you know. If you were being taught on the traditional ways of building cars and no and floors like that, by the time you go out into the industries and they are looking for future thinking people, you might not be able to contribute. So that's just an example of no, no, no. I feel like most people that are even encouraging students to go, they are just doing that outside their work. It's just like an advice. If they stick to what they are being taught, the way they are being paid to do them. I think it's just be oh face your books, face your books, face mm -hmm. your books. I think a lot of parents are now coming to see that um, the route to success is not always straight and yeah. it might not be based off of what you study. No, both in the content and in the structure. The content by which I mean um, there's no area for you to practice it, to use it. There's a lot of it is theoretical and also in the structure because because of the way that we are taught in school. You barely have any breathing space. There's no space for ITs. There's no space for internships. There's no space for you to take out that time to um, work in the world. As we conclude this documentary, the voices of students and educators have echoed a resounding truth. There exists a palpable gap in the educational system within public institutions in Nigeria. The disparities between theoretical knowledge and practical skills, the challenges faced by graduates, and the call for a curriculum overall are vividly illuminated through their narratives. 
From the earnest words of students grappling with limited hands-on experiences to the candid reflections of lecturers advocating for a more dynamic and industry-aligned approach, the consensus is clear. Our education system stands at a crossroad, demanding transformative change to meet the evolving demands of the modern workforce.